I'm having a, uh, a bit of a Simpsons moment. It's like I've had enough of you people. I'm off to Clown College. This is uh, quite nice. I've never spoken in a big top before. So I'm Eamon Carey. I work for a company called Keep. We're 18 months old. We had a 19-year-old CEO who raised a, a whole bunch of money over in Silicon Valley. Uh, we've just launched here in the UK. Um, and I'm going to talk pretty quickly, actually, because I'm conscious of, uh, of time. So why is happiness the new currency? Well, let me go through a couple of slides and, and tell you why. So. Our lives revolve around various different moments, right? Good ones, bad ones, indifferent ones. So if anyone is a fan of football, you might have a happy or sad, depending on your perspective moment, uh, based on what happened on Monday night at the, um, the Etihad Stadium up in, in Manchester. So all of these different types of moments are really important to people, right? Social media um, sites and applications have, have leveraged this to a, to a massive extent. So every time you post a status update or a photo on Facebook and you get a like, you get a little bit of a boost, right? On LinkedIn, how many people here have obsessively tried to get their profile, that little bar to 100%? Yeah, it took me ages, but I was determined and I finally got there. On Yelp, how many people want to be the most prolific or the most highly respected person posting reviews for a particular city or a particular region? So it works really well. If you look, this is Path. I don't know if anyone uses Path, but um, it's a brilliant mobile app. And again, it's just increased the range of different happiness that you can express uh, to people. So these moments happen everywhere, and, and, and games is a, a huge part of it nowadays. So I don't know if anyone takes the tube or, or the bus, or someone said, you know, if you're over 30 and you take the tube or the bus, you're a failure. I don't think that's the case in London. Um, but if you go on the bus, you'll see a lot of people with their tongue stuck out where they're biting it and they're concentrating or they're swearing, and that's sometimes me with flick kick football. Um, and they're playing games, right? So it could be Angry Birds, it could be flick kick football, it could be any number of different things. And they're massively, massively engaged in these things. And all of these apps and, and games now have this idea of happiness based, baked into them. So whether it's getting your like on Facebook or whether it's getting three stars on Angry Birds, achieving these things is huge, right? This is a slightly embarrassing story that my girlfriend hates me telling, but this is the best kebab shop in London, right? Um, and I'm the mayor of it in Kentish Town. Giles Corrin reviewed it in The Times on Christmas Eve. And I have this ongoing battle with this guy now about who is the mayor of the place. Right? It's totally pointless. I don't get any rewards for being the mayor, neither does he. But this place has probably gotten hundreds of pounds worth of business out of me because every time he becomes mayor, I immediately have to go back down there and buy you know, a kebab. My girlfriend hates kebabs, and I'm like, oh, you know, special treat tonight, honey. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm not, not necessarily the greatest boyfriend of, of all time. But this achievement moment is that moment where you put your hands over your head and you're massively elated. And you know people are having them all the time. They're having them on the bus. They're having them at home. They're having them potentially sitting at the back of the room here today if they're not necessarily interested in, in what I have to say. And, and apologies for that. And what we've identified at Keep is, is what this achievement moment is, right? So almost every game and application has these types of achievement moments baked in. So you get this sense of happiness. You know, yeah, I'm brilliant, I've leveled up, I can score a hat trick. There's a natural break in the game. So when you're playing a game, it'll come up and go, you've got a high score, you've just leveled up, you've done something. So there's a little moment where you're going, oh, I'm brilliant at this, right? The consumer is massively engaged because I know if you're getting an achievement moment, you're looking at your phone or you're looking at your iPad. You're not waving it around. You're not looking somewhere else. So you're engaged in the activity. It's a precursor to earning a reward, which is a nice segue into what I'm going to talk about next. And it follows an existing activity, right? People are already doing this stuff. And that's where Keep comes in. Uh, so we basically have identified this, this achievement moment and, and, and are now leveraging it. Right, and the achievement moment is, is, is really, really important. So, and if you look at it, it's worth bragging about. You level up in a game, you're brilliant at it, you get the highest score out of all of your friends, you have a better farm than anyone else, and Farmville, it's in all of these games, it's totally untapped in most cases. You know, so that natural pause I talked about, you get that dopamine rush of I'm amazing, there's an action taken, yeah, you have to do something to actually get this achievement moment. It happens multiple times per session, it happens billions of times a day globally, and it requires that eyeball and attention that I mentioned. And what we do at Keep is we basically give people rewards for these moments, right? So we do three different things. Real rewards, that's what it says on the tin. Hit a new high score, level up in a game, and we'll give you a latte from Starbucks, or we'll give you some chips from Pop Chips, uh, we'll give you cans of Coke, we'll give you tickets to football games, right? When we tell people this, the first thing that we normally get back is, yeah, the fulfillment of that is an absolute nightmare which is why we came up with this idea of branded moments, which is rewarding you with virtual currency. 
So a bunch of the games that are on our network are ones that are free to play. They have this currency baked in. People naturally want it. They want to level up. They want to do better. So virtual currency allows you to reward people digitally. And that can be an iTunes voucher. It can be virtual currency for a game. It can be a voucher to use on ASOS. It can be something you can use anywhere. And then Swarm is basically this idea that if I'm playing Mega Jump or Angry Birds or Flick Kick Football or any of those games, there are tens or hundreds of thousands of people playing it elsewhere in the city or country. So Swarm allows them to compete against each other for a massive prize. So we just did one of these with the Guinness Book of Records uh, last weekend, where we crowned a bunch of world record holders in a couple of different games globally. And we had, you know, I think about 3 million scores posted um, for, for the Mega Jump Swarm. Uh, we did one with Pop Chips here in London a while ago as, as our first kind of launch promotion to win tickets to the Madonna concert in Hyde Park. And we got 30,000 people playing for a brand that no one had ever heard of over a, a two-day period. So the, the, the joy of this is that we already work in games that have a, a baked-in audience that, that you can get in front of. Um, I talked a lot about games. These achievement moments happen everywhere. We've just launched into a bunch of health and fitness apps, so complete a workout, uh, beat your personal best, do any of these different things, and map my run, map my fitness. Um, we partnered with Pepsi in the States to launch it. They have energy drinks rather than the sugary ones we might uh, be familiar with. And we're moving into education and a whole bunch of, of other apps. And the goal with Keep, obviously, is to be the, the rewards layer for, for you know, a whole bunch of, of different things. I mean, these are some of the numbers. You know, we've got a, you know, well over 10 million uh, monthly unique users. These numbers are, are actually slightly out of date now because we've just brought about 30 or 40 new games onto our network. Uh, 47 million rewards served, half a billion moments we're seeing on a, on a monthly basis globally. Um, active in about 240 different games and applications, working with people like P&G, Disney, Best Buy, uh, Pepsi, Pop Chips, you, you, know, you, you name it, and, and, and uh, we're either already working with them or trying to. Uh, just launched over here reasonably recently. Um, and yeah, that's, that's our take on it. That's why we think this, this idea of happiness being the new currency is people are already engaging with brands in a different way on social media. So 10 years ago, people couldn't have a conversation with brands. Now they can on Facebook, now they can on Twitter, now they can on LinkedIn, now they can talk to individual businesses on Yelp. What we're talking about now is making that relationship a little bit more reciprocal. Right? People are having these achievement moments every day. What we're about is rewarding them. It's not necessarily saying we're going to replace traditional advertising or anything else, but it complements it. It sits alongside it. It sits alongside what everyone else up here uh, is doing. And, and yeah, we're massively excited to be here in the UK market. Thanks a million for your attention. Thanks to the IPA for their time.